Welcome back. Today, I'm super excited to talk to you about wants, needs, desires around touch. Now, some women in their relationships are over touch, right? They're like, don't touch me. They feel like sex and intimacy is a duty. You get to make a decision on how to feel comfortable in your own body and with whatever kind of intimacy you choose with your significant other. You can start to hear the signals of things that turn you on, like the gas pedal, and things that turn you off. They call like the brakes. If you look at Emily's book, Come As You Are, she's got a lot of amazing tips and tricks, as well as talking about what turns you on, in other words, what's your gas pedal, versus what turns you off, which is your brake pedal. And some people have really sensitive gas pedals. Some people have really sensitive brake pedals. Some people have both. So it can be challenging. Today, we're gonna to explore your wants, needs, and desires. And I'm gonna go through some of the concepts and science that are in this book, The Touch Crisis, Navigating the Tricky Train of Bringing Healthy Touch Back to Our Culture. But first, let's run the showreel. <laughs> In the last couple of videos, I've talked about how to explore where your touch boundaries come from. What do you believe about touch and intimacy and sex? How is that formed by your family values, by your social values, by your own history and your own background? In chapter two, we talked about safety and intention. And in this chapter, we're gonna talk about your wants, needs, and consent. So just pause for a moment and imagine now that you're, re you're receiving your ideal physical contact with another person. That's anyone. What is the sense in your body? So maybe it's a snuggle with your kid or your dog. Maybe your ideal physical contact is just a handshake or a really warm hug from a family member or somebody that you really care about. As you imagine that, what's the feeling in your body? Does it feel relaxed and soft or warm or buzzing? What happens with your breathing? Does it give you a sense of peace and openness? Now we can hear often our internal signals of what ideal touch would be like for us. And we can start to see where our physicality is giving us signals on whether we want to speed up and have more, like with the gas pedal, or whether we want to slow down, like with the brakes. What's really important is that you learn how to position yourself to express your wants and needs as you maintain awareness in the moment. But being really present with what's happening with your body, in your sights, in your sounds, in your breath, it's going to help you clue in to your own body signals. So you can make the choice that aligns best with you. Body language is such a large part of our face-to-face -face communication. And some studies say 50, up to 55%. So what is your body language telling other people about how you want to communicate? So imagine that a person who you absolutely adore and that you would love to hug walks towards you. How might you shift your body to open yourself up or to show that you're open to receiving a hug? And on days that you're feeling more protective or overwhelmed with touch, how might you position your body to protect yourself? So note, as you're moving through your day-to-day -day in your relationship, where are you turning away? or crossing your arms, picking up your phone, turning your back, or giving nonverbal signals to the people that you're with that you don't want touch, especially if you really do want touch. Why do you think you do this? Perhaps it's a protective mechanism. So what I encourage you to do is really go through the first couple of chapters and then notice what do you actually want around touch? So maybe, you feel like intimacy, like sexuality is a duty because you're not getting hugs or touch during the day, but you're so concerned that if you give a hug or 
open yourself up to just loving touch during the day, like a hand on the shoulder or a pet down the back, that it will turn into something sexual. And therefore you don't allow it. That's taking yourself away from that oxytocin hit, taking yourself away from that connection you so desire in order to avoid it turning into something sexual, which is okay. Are you aware of it though? And what would you like to choose? And if your choice is to avoid sexuality and intimacy, how can you communicate that clearly with words? How can you create a boundary that's very clear or start working into something slowly? For example, I've worked with some of my clients who have a history of abuse. And one of the ways that they work with their significant others is to reset their whole idea around sex and sexuality. So perhaps they start with a boundary of there's not going to be sex for a while, but let's do this instead. So today I'm just going to give you a back room and tomorrow, and you can give me one back, but we're not going to do anything sexual or today we're going to make out, but it's going to stop at X, Y, Z spot. And it's not going to go any farther. And what we get to do is start building trust with our partner saying, this is my boundary. And when I know that you're going to honor it, that we can start playing with our wants and needs and desires, and whoever has the tightest boundaries win, we pre-frame that before we get into an intimate situation. And we start training our minds and our bodies that we have control, that we can say no, and that our significant other is going to respect that. And if your significant other doesn't respect that, that's a red flag within itself. And it could mean that it's time to shift the relationship. Even the healthiest relationship can fall into patterns that create complacency or disconnection or a sense of obligation. This can happen with our parents, our children, and our friends. When we stay in tune with our own wants and needs, as well as the way we self-sabotage our own wants and needs, we can choose to make clear agreements, communication. We can create clarity. We can create synergy. We can find a way to create a balance of give and take that suits both sides and check in on the agreement occasion to make sure like, does this still work for you? Does this still work for me? Do we feel like this is connecting or do we need to change? Is this not working for us right now? And if so, what can we do to make it work? Because you want to make it work, don't you? Our desire for touch is often deeper than we realize. When we stop associated touch with sex, we can also tune into the deeper needs our mind and body have. As I've mentioned, touch is our first form of communication. It's necessary for our balance of hormones. It's necessary to release oxytocin. It decreases loneliness, increases the sense of bonding and connection. And that goes with any kind of touch, whether sexual or not. That physical contact can even be with a beloved teddy bear, with yourself as you give yourself a hug and really sit and tune into the sensation as well as a favorite pet or an animal. In a study that used touch to mitigate feelings of loss, they found that affective touch, which is any kind of touch that has pleasure or emotional components, helps reduce the feelings of social exclusion. Isn't that great? So now I'm gonna have you play with this on your own. I'm gonna put an exercise in the description below and I'd love for you to make a comment to tell me how this does for you, what you found when you were exploring and what it is, it's just a strategy around healthy touch. How much do you want a day? What type, what's the quality? Or what people do you want to touch or not touch? I hear that it's difficult for a lot of people and you get to do the work. It's easy work. So you can start seeing the benefits of healthy physical contact in your own life, of having the feelings of connection and joy and peace that can come when you are setting your wants, needs, desires, and your own boundaries in the way that you wish. So take what you've learned, teach it with others. 
Because what if you making one shift can change everything for your whole relationship with your friends or a family member or how your children interact with healthy touch and physical contact for their own well being and sense of strength? Remember, you are loved, you are loving, and you are lovable. Namaste.